surface. So we're going to use the select from sketch option and in this case I want to use single and so we'll just pick that bottom edge those three um, uh, sketches and we'll accept them and then we can pull our surface out and it doesn't really matter just as long as it extends past this particular surface then again using the trim command we can identify the body and this time we also want to identify the surface body to trim to use to trim and again we're going to trim away the bottom and you can see how now that trims that away exactly what we're looking for so when we're done with that we can turn off our extruded surface and you can see how we've taken the shape uh, uh, that was that uh, was set up for us by the industrial designer so let's go ahead and turn off the curves and we can also hide uh, these particular sketches now that we've got the general design created what we want to do is build the other half of the model but in order but before we actually do that we're going to actually uh, build a little space in between those two models. In other words, if I mirror this over to the opposite side, it's going to connect kind of like at a point right here. And I want to build a little bit of uh, a space in between the two. In order to do that, I'm going to go over and use a parallel reference plane. And I'm going to expand my reference planes here. And I'm going to use the front. And I'm going to come over about 10 millimeters. So I'm just going to key in 10 and you can go on either side but I'm going to come to the surface side and accept it now once that's created you notice how it intersects our surface I can use that now to remove material and now we've taken 10 millimeters off of this surface using uh, that reference plane and I'll turn that reference plane off now we're ready to mirror it in order to do that, let's go ahead and turn on our, our reference plane that's actually in the middle of the uh, part. And then if I come over uh, to the mirror pull down, you see mirror copy part. And we can actually select that part and then use the uh, reference plane in the middle to mirror it over for us very quickly. Now you'll notice that created a little bit of a gap for us and that's exactly what we're looking for. More, more space on the inside of our model for those internal components. So we have three surfaces left to develop. The back, the bottom, and of course this top uh, curved type surface. In order for us to create this surface we need uh, a guide curve that's going to actually take, in, take into consideration the front shape as well as the bottom front shape. So how would we do that? Well we have a command under the curve section called cross curve. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and click the cross curve command. Using coincident reference planes I'm just going to go ahead and use the top and you'll see it takes us into uh, the sketch environment where I can area up on this part. And then what I'm going to do is go to the uh, arc by three points and I'm going to pick up that end point of that front arc and then go to the opposite side pick up the other end point and just pull my arc out very quickly now when I'm done with that I always get rid of the horizontal vertical but you'll notice it's just a it's just an arc right so what I'm going to do is go ahead and convert this to a curve and now it's a curve just by using that command with that uh, arc highlighted and now I have a curve so the final thing would be to create tangency. We have some options when you're creating tangent. In this case we want to use parallel tangent vectors. And you're just simply going to make this arc tangent to this, this side as well as this side. And you've got your tangent uh, symbol showing the tangency has been created. So that's the first curve that takes into consideration this shape. Now we need to build the second curve you'll notice that the ribbon bar is stepping us through. The first curve has been created, now it's asking us to do create, uh, identify a reference plane to build the second curve and for that we're going to use the front reference plane from the base coordinate system and we're going to area up and for this curve I'm simply going to include it. 
Now there's a curve on both sides. Remember we have a mirrored surface behind here. So if you come here and you use Quick Pick, you're going to notice that Quick Pick shows Edge Trim 22 and Edge Mirror. Well, we don't want the mirror. We don't want the one on the opposite side. We want the Edge Trim. And you'll notice that it automatically includes that. And so what I can do at that point is grab that end point. I'm just going to extend it up just to make sure it crosses that other curve for us. When I'm done with that, we can step out and you'll notice right away from those two shapes we've built a cross curve that's in white there between those two shaped curves that we built. Cross curve, it's a very powerful command that allows you to uh, helps you allow us in this case to build a nice guide curve that we'll use when we build this surface. So let's go ahead and build this surface, get this model finished up. Before we build this, you'll notice we can come back into Blue Surf and uh, make any changes that we want at any time. And so th at this point, this looks good. So let's just go ahead and build this side and accept and, and build or grab the opposite side. It's going to build that blue surf uh, between those two components. The only problem is, is that surface real flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into our options and change our start and end section to be tangent continuous. I want a tangent continuous condition and notice what happens to that curve. Notice how it makes it tangent to those surfaces that I identified. Then we can go to guide curve and pick that cross curve that we created giving us the results that we're actually looking for here and you end up with a really nice looking surface. Now once that is completed we're ready to continue on with the rest of the uh, model. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to start toward the back. Now you don't want to start to where uh, this endpoint highlights. You want to start to where the back endpoint highlights and grab those three curves. Then accept them with the right mouse button click and then come to the opposite side selecting them in the same manner not selecting that middle one and it's going to build the surface. Again using the cross curve we can identify our uh, excuse me identifying the guide curve step we can identify our cross curve and you notice how it will close that gap up and build us a really nice uh, surface and then finally to close the back part up we're going to do the same thing one side opposite side guide curve in this case, we don't have a cross curve, but we've got a nice looking surface. We'll just identify the edge of that surface, closes our shape up, and builds the model that we're looking for. Very nice command using the surfacing, the blue surf, the blue dot, the trim commands, uh, the curve commands that we offer in ST3. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and hide the curves in our model and we're ready to actually build a solid model from our surface. In order to do that we can go to the stitched command. If we want to uh, change these options we can easily do that. In this case I'm going to simply fence select our model. Right mouse button click. It tells us that it built the solid body which you'll see added on to the bottom. It took all of this information and built us a uh, body feature and we now have a solid model uh, uh, to start from where we can begin adding features. So as I close and go back to the top level and we turn our hand mixer on, you'll notice how that fits fairly close to the design that our industrial designer started us with. So this concludes the first portion of our demonstration where we actually build the model. The next step is to go in and start adding features.